Yahoo YouTube, I am Super Yankee and in today's video I'm going to talk to you about my first traumatic experience in Europe. Before we get into the video, don't forget to smash that like button. Likes really help me out and let me know that I'm doing a good job and I should keep making these videos. With that being said, let's jump into the story. For Christmas, I am in Budapest. Budapest is the capital of Hungary. Hungary is a country over here in Europe. The city is separated into two parts, Buda and Pest, hence Budapest. I am currently staying in Pest, as you can see by the amazing scenery in the background. Why am I in Budapest? Because I have a friend I met in high school who is also in Budapest, visiting her parents, and I wanted to see her, so I came over here. And it's been awesome, it's been oh so much fun. Last night we went to a bar together with some other people and it was so much fun. I was telling like stories and everyone was laughing, we were all having a good time. But then at around 11 o'clock it was time for us to part our ways. They lived in this direction. I was staying in this direction. So I'm a little tipsy at this point and I'm thinking I want to run in the streets of Budapest while listening to some trance music above and beyond one of my favorite trance artists and I did and it was so much fun. Mind you I'm like Wah! I'm like running through the streets and I'm having a great time and I see this ice cream shop and I'm like ice cream? Ice cream for ice cream! I said that a little louder when I was there in the nighttime but hey I walk over to the ice cream shop and there's these two gentlemen that are there before me. Not the people working at the shop, but these two people that just look like they're there to be in the Christmas spirit, right? So I step up and I say, hey, can I get an ice cream? And I look at the people and they're like, yeah, sure, you can get an ice cream. That'll be 2,000 francs. And I'm like, okay, cool, I'm getting my money out. I only have a $10,000 bill. And I'm like, hey, can I change this $10,000 bill here? And they're like, yeah, sure. And then the two guys hear this conversation like, where are you from? And I'm like, I'm from America. And then he's like, oh, what state in America? And I'm like, I'm from Florida. And then he's like, hey, can I buy the ice cream for you? And here I am thinking, oh, they're so nice. They're such in the, like, the Christmas spirit and they want to buy me an ice cream. Of course you can, right? So while he's taking the money out, and while he's taking the money out, the other guy turns to me and is like, hey, my friend, do you want to buy some crack cocaine? We can take you to a place, make you feel really good. And then my facial expression goes from to concerned. I turn over to the other guy who offered to buy me the ice cream and I say please do not buy the ice cream for me because I, um, I lost my appetite for ice cream at that point. I look at the cashiers and I'm like hello am I, am I safe here? And when I say this the guy that offered to buy the ice cream for me started screaming in Hungarian at the ice cream parlors and they're going back at it for four minutes. This is like one of those experiences where as a tourist like you read about it in books and I have read about things like this in books before. You hear about these things but like when you experience them, when they actually happen to you, it puts you like in a fight or flight kind of mode. Luckily for me the situation didn't escalate to anything that was too bad. After about four minutes they left and I didn't buy the ice cream because I lost my appetite for ice cream. I went back to my hostel and I was a little shaken up. I know this because I was drinking a cup of hot chocolate and I actually like spilled the hot chocolate all over my clothes which is not typical of me because I love hot chocolate and I want to tell you what I learned from this experience because this stuff is not typical. It doesn't happen all the time but it can happen and it helps to be aware of that possibility. If you encounter a situation where you're in another country and you don't speak the language and something of this nature happens to you always defer to the locals because you see the local people understand that you're a tourist. The local people understand that you're a foreigner and the local people will want to help you. Luckily for me I was in an ice cream shop with some locals working there so I was able to go to them and say hey is everything alright and they were able to talk on my behalf to these Hungarian people which I couldn't communicate effectively to. When you're traveling you always want to be safe and being aware of your surroundings is always important and I mean look at this is so cool this place is so cool but that doesn't mean that like these realities don't exist. This is the first time I had ever experienced something like this and it kind of shook me up and you might say well Super Yankee nothing bad happened but like I, I don't know I mean I've read about this in books before if you've ever read The Alchemist I've used that book before in this channel there was a point in the book in the beginning where the shepherd went to Morocco and everyone was speaking in Arabic 
and he didn't understand Arabic. And then this other guy came over speaking to him in English, and then the shop owner was screaming at the guy in Arabic, and the guy was like, oh, he's trying to drape you or take your money away. I can take you to the Egyptian pyramids. And then the shepherd was like, all right, man, you sound like a really trustworthy guy. So he gives all the money to the guy, and then the guy like steals all of his money in the marketplace. I'm just saying, man, you gotta be aware of these situations. So when traveling in general, not just in Europe, I mean, this never happened in Japan, but like when traveling anywhere, you always wanna be aware of your surroundings. And you always want to have a plan of action for things go wrong. And your plan, and the plan of action that I learned is one, identify people's motives in the first couple sentences of the conversation. You know, if people are trying to ask you where you're from off the bat, if they're not willing to say a hello, how are you, then their motives might not be the best. You know what I mean? Because I mean, I give a lot of people flack for saying the hello, how are you. But honestly speaking, that's at least like an introduction. It's not just a straight question, you know what I mean? If it's a straight question, the people might be having a different motive. If it's a hello, how are you? Maybe they want to start a conversation and they don't get into the questions, man. Or even asking your name first, right? Once you establish the people's motives, you can adjust yourself on how you want to interact with them. Second, if things take a south turn, you always want to defer to the locals in the area because, I mean, it's a business. They're running businesses. They, these situations are bad for their business. Like, honestly speaking, this situation happened and I ended up not buying an ice cream cone. And that's bad for business, right? So refer to the locals because they will be able to help you out. And third, if there are no locals in the area, you have to be very acute in your language. You have to really stop in place and you have to tell them no and you have to just continue walking. You just have to ignore the situation altogether. My friend told me that, um, yeah, this stuff can happen, but no one's actually gonna like try to hurt you otherwise. I mean, that's if you just like keep walking down the way. If you continue the conversation, if you let them lead them on, if you let them buy you an ice cream cone, they're gonna use that against you to go take you somewhere and I don't know what. But YouTube, I just want you to be safe. I wanna be safe and I want, to, I want you to learn from my experiences because I mean, yes, we had to learn from our errors and mistakes and experiences. They don't have to be our own, they can be other people's. Anyway, YouTube, that's the video for today. If you like this video, don't forget to smash that like button. Like I said, likes really help out. Leave a comment. I love responding to comments. It gives me so much joy. Share this video with your friends. And share this video with your friends. We really need to get that good word of positive thinking out there to as many people as possible. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.